So welcome everyone to the fourth day of the Celestial Amplitudes and Flat Space Holography Workshop. Um, we're very happy uh, to kick off this morning session with an overview talk by Magil Miguel Campilla on asymptotic symmetries and flat space holography. Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Andrea, uh, and, and, and the organizers for the invitation. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, so, so I, I will um, start then. Please uh, stop me anytime. I, I have planned uh, my talk so that it can be uh, interactive. So, so please uh, stop me at any point. Um, so I, I wanted to, to start with some um, uh, basic uh, point. I, I don't know if, uh, uh, okay, maybe I'll close this. So this is a, a schematic uh, Penrose diagram of uh, flat space time. And uh, on, on this Penrose diagram, I, I will draw uh, some uh, constant time slices, uh, um, basically some finite time slice and then the, uh, the uh, time going to plus infinity or minus infinity. And usually when we describe um, field theories, we work uh, with uh, the data of fields either at a, at a constant time slice, as in the Hamiltonian formulation, say, or we can also describe fields uh, in the late and early times as uh, one does when studying scattering. So when, when the, the, the topic of the talk, uh, asymptotic symmetries, one can study them in these different formulations and in general, they will look different. And um, we should, uh, at the end of the days, somehow have compatible description, compatible uh, symmetries, regardless of where how we are describing them. And as I will illustrate, this is not always obvious the case. So, I mean, I will mostly focus on, in the, this late time uh, uh, description and uh, mostly for the case of massless fields. So I will, most of my talk will be based on uh, the symmetries at null infinity, but I wanted to have this uh, first uh, comment. And, um, before getting into the, 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 the uh, uh, let, me, let me continue with a bit of more uh, background introduction or, or uh, elementary points. So first to start, I mean, of course, I, I will be mostly interested in, in, in gravity in four dimensions. And, and, and the, here, the, the most uh, elementary asymptotic symmetries are just simply space-time translations. The, and these were understood um, yeah, in the early uh, 60s. And, and they, this is what we need to, to do to understand energy and momentum in general relativity. So in, in the finite formulation, this was uh, understood by, uh, in particular, by Arno with this, uh, this era Misner. And uh, in the uh, uh, null infinity or late time formulation by, by Bondi, Metzner, and Sachs. But uh, as I was saying, the, um, the, the compatibility of, uh, of these descriptions is uh, not obvious. And in fact, uh, this was shown quite uh, af some few years after uh, uh, this understanding uh, by, by Astrid and Manuel uh, in 79, where they show that these uh, three different notions of energy and momentum were consistent, basically. But here in this uh, conference, we are interested in infinite dimensional enhancements of these asymptotic symmetries. And as uh, you all know, uh, Bondi, Messner, and Sachs found extra symmetries, um, which are uh, super translations. And the, the consistency of uh, uh, the compatibility of uh, one can ask the compatibility of super translations in in the late and early time description, and also 
in the finite uh, time description. And this was only understood uh, relatively uh, recently. Uh, in, in 2013 by, by Strominger, he showed how the, the late and early time description of super translations is uh, compatible. And, um, and uh, a few years ago, uh, Keno and Troisart studied uh, super translations in, in ABM. So th this uh, introduction was to, to illustrate how, how uh, difficult it can be to, to um, uh, make uh, the compatibility of the various uh, descriptions. And um, BMS, of course, uh, do not exhaust all asymptotic symmetries. And as uh, Barnich and Troisart uh, showed, there can be uh, further asymptotic symmetries, in particular super rotations. And, and this will be one of the main uh, focus today for me. But more generally, uh, if, if this uh, do not exhaust all symmetries, uh, we can ask what, what is, at the end of the day, the full asymptotic symmetry group of, uh, of uh, gravity in asymptotically flat space time. Um, and I guess this is a question that has uh, arise already in the workshop in the context of uh, celestial uh, amplitudes. So I, I think, uh, we will share uh, interest in, in this question. So in order to, to um, try to understand what is the, at the end of the day, what, how much we can extend the symmetry, so what is at the end of the day the, the complete asymptotic symmetry group, we can take guidance from various places, uh, in particular from soft theorems, uh, as, which will be the, the main, um, guidance I will take from uh, in this talk, but also by looking and studying simpler theories, such as um, QED or, or even gravity, but in dimensions different than four. Um, uh, another uh, interesting place where to try to understand asymptotic symmetries is by focusing uh, near spatial infinity rather than null infinity. And uh, of course, as I was saying, from the celestial CFP perspective, one can, one is also getting um, information or insights on what this asymptotic symmetry group is. And there, of course, can be more uh, guidance from other places. But here I will, as I was saying, I will focus mostly on, on soft theorems. And let me see if I can write. and uh, also examples from QED. So uh, first, let, let me, when we talk about soft theorems or, or expansions in, in the energy or frequency, we, we can distinguish between uh, classical and quantum soft theorems. So we have a notion of uh, energy or frequency expansion in either amplitude, uh, quantum amplitudes or, or in classical uh, emission of, of radiation. And uh, this, in principle, this is uh, distinct from the uh, tree versus loop level um, uh, distinction of, of, of soft theorems. I mean, there, are, as I will discuss, there are uh, loop corrections also for classical soft theorems. Uh, and we, uh, we can also talk about the leading and then subleading soft theorems. So th there are many uh, uh, qualifiers we can add to these soft theorems. Uh, and the, the, the one that in the context of gravity, the, the one that is best uh, understood in, in connection with asymptotic symmetries and, and the one that was first uh, established this connection is this leading one over uh, omega uh, one soft theorem that was shown in this paper to be equivalent to the conservation of supermomentum. And this uh, result doesn't receive loop corrections and is valid either at classical and quantum level. So uh, if we want to get lessons from some theorems, uh, how much we can push this initial uh, result. So let me talk a little bit about uh, uh, so uh, high order so, so theorems. 
So going uh, beyond this uh, leading Weinberg's uh, soft theorem. So at, at, uh, if we stick at the level, um, as uh, has been also, I think, uh, discussed in, pre in other talks, uh, we have a, a, a sub-leading and sub-sub-leading uh, uh, formula. And, and then there is also um, higher order formulas that uh, uh, can be referred to as partial soft theorems in that they don't fully, um, uh, they, they capture only pa a part of the, the uh, dependence of the, um, on the amplitude uh, at this order of the frequency. Uh, if we in, uh, now consider uh, results that uh, are, valid, <clears throat> are valid beyond three level at, at any loop, this has been studied by a uh, 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 few authors in the past years. And there is a, somehow, the, the, uh, somehow the analog of this uh, higher order of the, three levels of theorems are these uh, loop levels of theorems that uh, have a, a different um, a, a logarithmic dependence on the frequency or energy. Uh, and uh, so I, I will come back to, to basically to a, a lowest examples of these uh, three and loop level soft theorems. But uh, let me say that, that I mean, the, the, the most, uh, the clear uh, asymptotic symmetry interpretation for this, uh, and, uh, for the ones I'm displaying in this slide, are, is only uh, the one for what will be the sublime three levels of theorem, which is uh, was shown in this paper to be related to super rotations. So um, I, I will first um, review a bit uh, these super rotations and, sorry, uh, but then, uh, and, and then say, say discuss a bit how we can uh, continue and, and try to go beyond this example of three level super rotations to either uh, go higher order in three level or, or to be able to include loop uh, corrections. E even this uh, simplest uh, higher order soft theorem uh, has a lot of subtleties that I will describe. Um, and, and for instance, the, the special infinity description that is well known for super translation, as I was mentioning in the introduction, is also not uh, known for, for for these super rotations. So uh, then uh, I will uh, now get more into the uh, bulk of the talk. So in order to, to discuss these issues in more detail, I will uh, recall the expansion of the metric near infinity, and then describe this three-level uh, soft theorem and super rotations, um, and then discuss how we can go beyond this uh, result um, and uh, say a few words about loop level and uh, higher order um, three level soft theorems. And uh, I will uh, rely for some of this discussion in an, an, an problem analog uh, in QED. So this is again Penrose diagram of flat space time. So uh, we, then, uh, we will look at the metric near uh, null infinity. So taking the limit r goes to infinity in these uh, uh, coordinates. So u is the uh, retarded time. Uh, we take r to infinity, keeping this retarded time uh, constant. I will be uh, calling the coordinates on the celestial sphere by little x, and uh, this can be either holomorphic uh, stereographic coordinates or, or ordinary spherical coordinates. So these uh, indices A, B are these sphere indices. Uh, if, we, if, if I didn't have this C here, this will be just the flat space-time metric. And this uh, C here, that is the correction to the uh, angular part of the 
of the metric that is subleading in the, in, the, in the R expansion is what captures the information of gravitational waves going away at null infinity. This is a, a, a refer, sometimes referred as a shear because it's a shear of the, uh, this outgoing null geodesics. Uh, and also, uh, one can think of it as being the free data of the gravitational field at null infinity in the sense that it is not uh, uh, constrained by the field equations. And if I think of a, a kind of initial or, or rather final uh, value problem where I specify all my radiation at, at, at future null infinity, uh, then uh, this is the field you, you can specify and then you can evolve backwards if, if I think in, in the reverse uh, uh, initial value problem. So that's why it's called free data. And uh, maybe to make contact with more uh, uh, standard notation, perhaps this is this shear captures basically the, the transverse trace free part of the metric perturbation that contains information of, of, the, of the gravitational waves. So to complete uh, the, the description of uh, the asymptotic space time metric. We also we need to specify this uh, shear C. Uh, what class of shears are, are we going to allow or to consider? So for that we, we need to specify how the, the follow-ups in this retarded time U uh, are going to be for this shear. So the, the most basic requirement is, is that we need the, the the U derivative of the shear to go to zero as, we, as U goes to plus or minus infinity. And um, basically, uh, and, I mean, the one way of seeing this is that the, the flux, energy flux of gravitational waves is the square of this quantity. So we want uh, this flux to be finite. And, 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 and this behavior is, uh, Related to the one over uh, omega behavior, if we Fourier transform the, the shear. So, when we talk about this classical soft theorems, I will be talking about the Fourier, uh, the zero uh, frequency expansion of the Fourier transform in, in this U variable of the shear. So, this, uh, if, 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 the, if now the shear uh, at, at nine infinity is uh, one resulting from some uh, classical uh, scattering process, then this uh, the factor, uh, the multiplicative factor in this one over omega will be the classical Weinberg soft theorem, let's say. And then uh, as we go and get finer in the, in the description of the four loops and, the, and, and we go higher order in the frequency expansion, then we will start uh, seeing this higher order uh, sort of expansion terms, and, and then we will need to specify these follow-ups uh, better. So now um, let's talk about um, uh, basically the, the, the way I, I will think about asymptotic symmetries in gravity in this talk, it will be as uh, large diffeomorphisms. It, it, I mean, there could well be, of course, other type of asymptotic symmetries, but I will basically mean, uh, yeah, basically uh, think only in terms of uh, large diffeomorphisms. So the, the, the simplest to, under, to describe are uh, diffeomorphisms that are asymptotically killing, and these are uh, what uh, BMS studied and what gives uh, the, the BMS group. These are um, generated by Super trans, so called super translations that are vector fields parameterized by functions on the, on the celestial sphere F. And I'm here describing the action of this uh, super translation on the Lean order angular metric, which of course it uh, keeps it invariant, and uh, the action on the shear, which is uh, consistent with um, uh, it has a homogeneous piece and, and a U independent shift. And this action is, of course, consistent with the, the previous, these follow-ups we had, where we require that the U derivative of the shear goes to zero. Then in BMS, we also have uh, the, the 
rest of the Lorenz group, basically rotations and boost. And uh, these are um, uh, in this coordinates, they take the, the form, they are parameterized by uh, vector fields on the sphere that are uh, conformal killing vector fields. So that means that uh, if I, when I compute the action on the sphere metric, um, it formally it has this form and, and this is zero because the vector field is uh, conformal killing on the sphere. So this gives me the six uh, Lorentz generators. And then we have um, an, uh, the action on, on, the, on the shear that has a similar as in the super translation case, it has a homogeneous space and it, and it has a will be in homogeneous term linear in U that is zero for conformal killing vector fields. Um, now, uh, the way I, the reason I'm writing this uh, explicit, this vanishing terms here is that the extension to super rotations uh, consists basically on partially relaxing the, this conformal healing condition. So one can either relax, relax it at isolated points on the sphere, and this is the original proposal of Barnich and Troisart. And one can alternatively drop altogether this condition and uh, just work with uh, smooth vector fields on the sphere. So it, it, it may be that these two uh, alternative um, extensions or are not that um, independent in the sense that one can think that one can get the uh, um, Barnich Troisart. Um, vector fields as a limit of the smooth of smooth vector fields and, and um, conversely one could get uh, the smooth vector fields by some appropriate smearing of this uh, uh, singular vector fields as was discussed in this paper but uh, from what i from what i'm going to discuss it really doesn't matter that much which of which vector fields uh, we we use what, what will matter is that we will have um what, what I want to discuss next is that in either case, we will have, a, we have here a, a term that is um, an inhomogeneous shift that is uh, uh, proportional to U and uh, the sphere metric changes non-trivially even, um, uh, even if it's at some isolated points. So, okay, so, so then this will be kind of the, the two um, aspects of super rotations uh, I, I'm highlighting now. So, in order to, to uh, properly understand um, super rotations, uh, we need to consider a relaxed version of Bondi expansion so that we can allow for this more general uh, uh, space time metrics. So, we, need, we, need, we have a relax, relaxation in R and in U. And uh, in fact, this type of more general bond expansion is already implicit in the analysis of Gerok of asymptotics um, of asymptotic space spacetimes at null infinity by by the use of conformal methods, and um, uh, of course in in, in different uh, language annotation that I am presenting here. But basically, he introduced uh, a tensor that here and uh, calling it. TAB, uh, uh, actually this uh, TAB here is the trace free part of the tensor that Gerog introduced and it satisfies some, some condition. Its divergence is proportional to the gradient of scalar curvature of the 2D metric. Uh, this can also be understood as um, in terms of a, a sort of potential psi or, or Liouville field introduced by these authors. And uh, the, what, the, what this tensor does is it allows you to uh, define a renormalized shear that I'm calling with C hat here, uh, which that is the original shear minus U times this tensor. And the, what this does is it absorbs this uh, order U in, in homogeneous shift. So now the renormalized tensor transforms on homogeneously. And then you can have, um, and then this C hat is the field that properly 
captures the, the information of gravitational waves in these kind of super rotated frames. Okay, so uh, from now on, uh, I will, uh, in the next slides, I, when I write C, it will be, uh, really be this C hat, this renormalized shear, uh, so that always uh, we have the, this decay property. So let me now um, say a few words about uh, the charges associated to this large diffuse. So for BMS, um, one can obtain the charges by um, uh, canonical or phase based methods. Uh, uh, there is a, a well known symplectic structure on the shear at null infinity introduced by, by Astrical and Struble. For super rotations, one, one needs to extend this, this uh, uh, construction of Astrical and Struble uh, uh, in order to incorporate this more relaxed uh, expansion of, on the metric. This has been discussed in, in several places and here I'm uh, giving only a couple of references. And what I wanted to, to emphasize here is the, this has only really been, um, I mean, uh, this, um, yeah, this extension uh, has been uh, treated uh, for what I will refer to as three level follows. So now I, I will need to start getting more uh, uh, say more things about the, how fast the derivative of the shear is falling. And um, if um, what I, I will refer to as three level follow-ups uh, as a decay that goes faster than uh, one over u square, the, uh, the u derivative of the shear, and this infrequency space will be associated to a subleading term that is order frequency to a zero. Um, Sorry, Miguel, can I ask a quick yes. question? About yes, the, please. The, yes. So, uh, the, the paper by Kumberfio, Voci, and Ruzziconi uh, renormalized the, the divergent of the symplectic structure for super rotations. What is the second, uh, the non local, non covariant counter terms that you yeah, mentioned? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, the second uh, is actually um, the, uh, in this paper, the authors they only say uh, they don't construct uh, any symplectic structure, but they say that. Uh, any symplectic structure supporting super rotation uh, necessarily has non-local, either non-local and or non-covariant uh, counter terms. Um, I just wanted to... Um, so so uh, are the two making uh, an equivalent statement or... No, 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 sorry, no. Uh, uh, basically, the, the second reference uh, is saying that, I mean, it's in agreement with the first one, I will say. The second reference is saying that uh, they are not committing to any, they are not say, uh, committing to any particular um, symplectic structure. They are only saying that whatever your symplectic structure is, it will have these non-local, non-covariant terms. That, that's all they, they are saying. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah that, that's all. But somehow that, that I mean, uh, yeah. And then the, the counter terms one needs are, are out of this type. Can I maybe ask maybe one of the yeah. authors of the compare for the Ruzziconi paper is there if they uh, maybe? Yes, also sure, sure, sure. Um, also, also Strominger is a raising hand. Yes, please, Andy. Um, yeah, so the, um, the algebra of the super rotations and the super translations doesn't close, right? I mean, the, the, there's an algebra, there's a modified bracket, but just a straightforward bracket has field dependent operators on the right hand side. Isn't that an obstruction to um, constructing charges? Yeah, that, that actually uh, will be kind of the, the topic of Alok's uh, talk after mine. And I see. I, I will, uh, I have some small comments, but basically, yeah, basically the super rotation charge ha has to be modified so that you have a charge, uh, so that you have closure between super rotations and super translations. And, and this modification doesn't affect this, uh, the consistency with, actually I have it in the last point here. The, the uh, this uh, modification doesn't um, uh, affect the consistency with the three level single uh, soft theorem. 
And was there any, there was another question, I think, or, yeah, okay. Um, Anyone else has a question or comment on this? We once, uh, just to stress again what yeah, Miguel said, I mean, the two papers are not in contradiction in the sense that, in fact, the normalization of the sympathetic structures happens by introducing non covariant terms in the Lagrangian. So, if this is a general feature or if it's uh, if there is some obstruction to create uh, some non covariant counter terms, that's uh, that's the statement of the second paper. But so far, the normalization has been done is always using non covariant terms. So, in this sense, the two statements are in agreement. Right. Okay. Great. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah. I guess so. I guess the then I can say basically the second statement, is, the second paper is saying that yeah, you, you necessarily will need to use these non non covariant terms. You, you won't be able to do the normalization without them. Uh, there is a question by Sang Min. Um. Yeah. So you mentioned this uh, changing the super rotation such that the algebra closes. Um, if you do that, does it close in the regular brackets and not the modified brackets, or is it something else? Um, uh, the, 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 it, it, the, the algebra it reproduces is it, the same, uh, uh, this extended BMS algebra, but uh, uh, the brackets, I mean, the Poisson brackets we are using, they, they are, uh, of course, different from the original Aztec R2 brackets. I mean, in the sense that we are including uh, extra extra degrees of freedom, basically, and uh, th this will be also part of Alok's uh, talk after mine. Okay, I'll wait for the, the next talk. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, so. Yes, so um, now I want to, so yeah, so maybe I, I, now I refer to Alex talk for, for more details on super rotations and I wanted to say a few words about how we can go beyond these uh, uh, three level super rotations. And so one possibility will be to try to go, um, to stay at three level, but try to go higher order in, the, in this soft expansion. Uh, and one idea, uh, although certainly not, not the only possibility, but one, one possibility will be that uh, maybe one can uh, keep relaxing uh, carefully this uh, bondy expansion to allow for uh, basically more singular vector fields in, in, the, in the R dependence in order to capture uh, this uh, higher order soft uh, theorems. I mean, this has, hasn't uh, been, uh, I mean, we, 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 there's been example of the charges reproducing this uh, soft theory, the, the soft theorems, but the, the, so far the, there hasn't been any construction of uh, the, the renormalized symplectic structure or appropriate phase space for this class of vector fields. And for, the, for this reason, we, we don't know, uh, we don't have a handle on the underlying algebra either of the vector fields or, or, or of the charges. And, and here I should mention that uh, from the celestial uh, perspective, th there's been progress in understanding this uh, algebra for this uh, higher order soft theorems in the single helicity sector as we heard in previous talks. Uh, th there are similar structures in, in, in three level QED that one can use uh, to, I mean, uh, they are much simpler, so that one can, it's easier to, to understand them. And, and also uh, uh, in three level young mates. So another direction where, where to go beyond uh, these three level super rotations is uh, to discuss uh, the effect of, of, of loops. So, so then, then we really uh, need to go to, in order to, to discuss um, the uh, soft factorization at loop level, uh, we need to, now the, the, what happens is that rather than the, the, the sublime term is no longer order omega to the zero, but is order 
log omega, and this is associated with this uh, 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 stronger follow-off than I was describing before. So now the, the follow-off is uh, of a derivative of the shear is one over u squared. So I, I'm calling them loop level follow-offs in u. And uh, I mean, it, it, of course, the, the original uh, three level charge I was describing is not defined for, for these um, follow-offs. Basically, the, the, what is referred to as the soft part of the of the superrotation charge is um, proportional to the integral over all u of, of u times the, the derivative of the shear, and, and this uh, diverges with these follow-offs. That, that's why before we, we needed to, to have a, a decay that was faster than this. I, I will come back to this point in, in the example of Q, in the analog of this situation in, in QED in, in, in a few slides. But I mean, the, the expectation one has is that, um, I mean, if one, that one should be able to do the, the correct uh, renormalization for this loop level follows and get uh, a super rotation charge consistent with the uh, log omega of theorem uh, by, by Zahu and Sen. And uh, as, as I will, Commenting in a few slides, this expectation is based on, on the analog problem for photons and also on, on the existence of uh, uh, loop corrected uh, stress tests on at null infinity studies in, in this paper. So, now to in the last, uh, in the remainder of the talk, then I will uh, talk a little bit about uh, photons. I mean, I, I basically because this is the, the first uh, problem we, we uh, attacked. I mean, uh, I wish I could uh, continue with gravity, but, but um, we have done it. So let, I will uh, tell you what we have done, which uh, so far uh, studied the, the, the problem with photons. I mean, this has advantages and disadvantages. The, the, the advantage is that expressions are simpler, but the disadvantage is that the, the symmetry, uh, I mean, we, we are, I'm going away from, from super rotations. Anyways, so, so now, now let me then say a few words uh, about Sabine photons. So at, at three level, um, the, the, the Sabine photons are, are order omega to the zero and um, the, the properties are, can be described in terms of certain charges parameterized by sphere vector fields y as shown in this paper. In, in the spirit of what I was uh, describing before in gravity, one could uh, uh, reinterpret these uh, charges in terms of um, large uh, gauge charges uh, uh, that uh, uh, with a gauge parameter that is of order r. And, and, and the relation between the order R uh, gauge parameter and the vector field is, 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 is something of this type. And um, as in super rotations, in order <clears throat> to deal with these diverging gauge parameters, one needs to relax the, what are the standard follows for the gauge field uh, to allow for these uh, configurations and work out the uh, corresponding renormalized Synclectic structure. This is something that um, uh, Javier Peraza, uh, my student, is uh, currently finishing. Um, the, 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 um, and, and now, now if, if, we, uh, the, if we want to look at the loop level soft, uh, soft uh, theorem, uh, basically, the uh, one can write it in terms of similar charges that can be thought of as the loop corrected soft charges uh, discussed before. So let me uh, just comment a little bit on this. And uh, as I, the, the only the downside of of this um, of the example I'm presenting here is that the symmetry uh, and phase space interpretation of these loop corrected charges uh, are is still not understood. Uh, I, I apologize that I, I 
didn't have, um, I, I have now um, pasted some slides from uh, another talk uh, that, I that I will recycle, but I will just um, um, go only focus on the, on the important aspects. I will not uh, cover the whole slide, so I apologize for, for the clutter. Um, so let, let me um, focus, sorry. So let me, uh, I'm, I'm writing here the, the, the soft expansion of, of, in QED uh, as the energy of, the, of a photon goes to zero. We have the uh, Weinberg term and then the subleading term uh, that goes like log omega. Uh, what is important here is that um, even though uh, uh, when, uh, when we are, uh, when we include loops, uh, they are IR um, divergences, this, uh, this quotient uh, is infrared finite, as, as uh, shown uh, by Sahu and Sen. And so there is an, 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 ambiguous, an ambiguously and well-defined uh, soft factor. So th this factorization, one can, let me, one can write it, this, this expansion in the frequency, one can, uh, uh, extract from it the what will be the, the a leading factorization and the subleading factorization. Basically, we can uh, insert appropriate uh, derivatives and powers of the frequency in order to isolate this log omega. And this is kind of the first step one does to in order to rewrite the soft factorization as a word identity. Um, the, the here before I had the, the particular expression. Um, I mean, what, what will matter for what I'm going to say is that the, this soft um, uh, fact, the logarithmic factor is a sum of two contributions and one contribution uh, is, appears in the classical theory as well. And the second contribution is purely quantum. That's, that's all I want to say about the logarithmic soft factor. Um, so the, the infrequency, so basically the, the, the dependence on the frequency dictates what the projection in frequency should be here. And this uh, Fourier transformer back in, in, in U space gives an expression, a candidate expression for, for what will be the, the soft charge. Uh, here I'm already, um, this E is, the uh, 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 what will be the electric field at null infinity. So it's the U derivative of the gauge field at null infinity. And here, sorry, I'm using uh, capital A now for the sphere indices. So X A is Z and Z bar for instance. And um, so, so, so one can do the same type of projection uh, or sorry, one does the, the appropriate now projection for the, for the soft part and the smearing in the angular part is the same as in the three level case. We do the smearing with the vector field. And now, um, in, uh, and this, uh, this, if one does the same smearing on the, what will be the, the hard part of the, of the soft theorem, one can understand it uh, in terms of, of a charge. Um, in order to, in, in, in this case, we have to deal with massive particles. I mean, this log factor, this log of theorem was present for the case of massive particles. Uh, so we have a, a massive, uh, we were dealing here with a charge uh, scalar field that is massive. And we need to, uh, in order to study its late time behavior, one can go to, um, one needs to capture the information of the asymptotic uh, um, velocity of the time-like geodesic uh, that one is approaching to uh, time infinity. Th there is a, a question here. Yeah, does that, um, does this, does the infrared cutoff appear? Is there an infrared cutoff in this? So far, no, no, there is none. Um, so, uh, what what makes log tau dimensionless? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, this is, uh, of course, this is the the leading um, 
of course, this, yeah, if I, I should write here tau over some tau naught, and I guess, I mean, this will be, this log tau naught will be in these dots here in the sense that it's subleading in, in, as tau goes to infinity. So tau naught then would be like an infrared cutoff. But it's not, but tau naught will be some, yes, some uh, reference time, but of course it's not, um, uh, yeah, I, I never thought of it as an infrared, infrared cutoff. Um, I mean, in principle, we are uh, uh, just looking at the asymptotic behavior of the field at, at late times and correcting it by, by the fact that there is a, by the presence of the electromagnetic field. So actually, yeah, but yeah, this V of- But presumably H if that's a loop diagram, you do it in momentum space. Oh, oh this isn't a loop diagram you're saying. No, no, this is like, this is like the dress, this is like the dress uh, matter field and the dressing here is like the coulis fadier dressing basically. It, it will end up being like that. It's a dressing that you get by, by the asymptotic, um, yeah. Um, so the, basically, uh, I mean, to understand the charges, the hard charge, we, we need to look at the at the dress field uh, at time infinity, uh, at time infinity, um, and um, and in particular, and then one looks at the asymptotic current near time infinity. And the point is that because of this uh, dressing that I'm calling uh, V of X, so V of X will be kind of like the, kind of like the late time uh, uh, pot scalar potential of the, uh, of the electromagnetic field. Um, because of that dressing, the, the, this, uh, there is a, um, uh, the, the current has, uh, there is a component of the current that is uh, of the asymptotic current that is uh, of this form that has uh, contributions from, uh, from this dressing. And that is why this component of the current is uh, order E square. And the, the, um, this component of this, um, uh, uh, time component of the asymptotic gauge field that I'm calling V satisfies uh, some uh, Laplace equation at, at time infinity and that can be uh, uh, that can be written that can be solved in terms of the uh, asymptotic charge at null infinity plus some possibly some homogeneous solution and the, the reason I'm, I'm I'm writing I was writing this was that the uh, at the end of the day, in, in, in the, the, the charge at time infinity is given by a smearing on the time infinity hyperboloid of um, vector field on the hyperboloid that is constructed from the original uh, sphere vector field by some appropriate smearing. And this uh, current J alpha, and the, the, the point uh, I wanted to make here is that this Current J alpha has two pieces, has the piece that came from the solution of Laplace equation with the charge density. So you see that this, this term is, uh, I mean, these soft theorems I didn't write explicitly, but they are, um, they have double, instead of single sums as in Weinberg soft theorem, they have double so sums. And this double sum appears because uh, this hard charge is, um, quartic rather than quadratic. And in principle, there is this second piece that um, because of the homogeneous, um, so a possibly a homogeneous solution when solving this Laplace equation. And what is interesting is that the, um, uh, maybe that classically, uh, this homogeneous solution is zero. And here is the, but if you write classic, what we, if you write the expression of this homogeneous solution in terms of the free field, because this homogeneous solution is just, just depends on the, on the radiative field. Then we have an expression that 
is basically a, a zero frequency limit of uh, something that classically will vanish, but quantum mechanically it does not vanish because uh, because uh, uh, um, uh, the difference between between annihilation and a creation operator, and uh, precisely. Um, and so if we basically put hats here and, uh, uh, and insert uh, and treat this as, a, as an extra contribution as, as I had it here, then that, that precisely um, reproduces the, the uh, re reproduces, I'm sorry, reproduces the, the what would be the quantum part of the soft theorem. So, so the soft theorem, had uh, uh, this S log had a, a, a part that was um, appearing in classical theory and a part that appeared only in the quantum theory. So this second term that appear only in the quantum theory is due to this um, homogeneous uh, contribution of the asymptotic uh, to asymptotic gauge field. Uh, I apologize. I, 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 um, this part was a bit too too fast, um, but I, I just wanted to highlight that uh, th these uh, complicated soft factors that one sees in, in this uh, log omega soft theorems, they can also be understood uh, in terms of um, war identities. So that, that gives us hope that, say, in the case of gravity, we should also be able to understand it in, in, uh, as war identities. and. Uh, and then get a, a loop understanding of uh, super rotations. Um, yeah, and so there is a question by Prahar. Uh, hi, so you have these uh, modified charges. So presumably there's also some modified symplectic form that you would have to construct. Right. Yes, to generate. yes. Do you know what that is? Or no, that, that, yeah, that was unfortunately, that was yeah one of the uh, open, uh, yeah, one of the things we, we don't know, uh, that, uh, we haven't uh, looked at. So yeah, one, one, that, that would be one thing uh, to understand what is a correct uh, renormalizing practice structure and, and uh, for this, uh, for this what I was referring as loop level follow-ups. Mm, okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, Miguel, you have about five minutes. Yeah, so then I, I will just um, I will just uh, conclude. Sorry. No, please go on. Yeah, I will just conclude. I mean, the, the, so the, this yeah, so the main uh, yeah, I apologize. This was a bit disorganized. This last piece, but was to, to I wanted to make the point that that uh, I mean at least it's it's a uh, yeah, it should be possible to to do uh, similar. Um, strategy in the case of gravity and both in gravity and, and QED, we still we will still need to properly understand the renormalized uh, symplectic structure as Prahar asked. So uh, I will say that there is still a, 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 there is still a lot to do, be done and understood uh, even for these uh, super rotations once we once we want to uh, account for loop effects. Um, finally, I wanted to list some topics that I did not get uh, time or knowledge to talk about. Um, uh, I, um, well, first, uh, I didn't touch any anything on memory effects, and I, I apologize. I should have written uh, many references here for memory effects, but I just wanted to bring out. Uh, recent uh, discussion or that, that has been done in, in the context of gravitational waves from binary coalescence. And I may probably, Nichols may say something in the discussion session about that. Also, uh, I think one can learn, as I was saying at some point, one can extract probably uh, many lessons by studying uh, dimensions r than four so in d equals three one can make a lot of progress and and in d greater than four these logarithmic uh, terms don't appear so there are different simplifications uh, happening when we go away from four that we should uh, we can probably uh, learn about uh, learn from then there are more, more uh, like mathematical or group theoretical aspects uh, of uh, extended VMS that should also 
uh, shed light. Um, I, I didn't uh, uh, talk anything, but an, another uh, approach that uh, is very uh, nice is uh, one of studying symmetries uh, from this hyperbolic description of, of spatial infinity. And uh, here I should say that, uh, I mean, even, yeah, again, even super rotations have, haven't been fully understood in this, in this description. Um, I, I, I believe that probably uh, in Henoch's talk, we will hear about um, asymptotic symmetries in the AVM formulation. So that's another uh, very important uh, uh, approach to have. And of course, there are many other uh, approaches that uh, I may have missed. Uh, um, but I, I let people uh, speak up if they want to add uh, points in, in this list. So thank you very much for your attention. And I stop here. Thank you very much, Miguel. Um, anybody in the list here who wants to make comments on this last point? You probably hear about some of that in the uh, later talks and the uh, panel discussion. Otherwise, any questions for Miguel? Mark, did you want to get, make a comment? I just see your video appeared. Yes, you have a question, good. Uh, yes, I was trying to raise my hand. Uh, well, I have a question concer uh, concerning the expansion of the metric near null infinity in powers of u and uh, r. If you take uh, rather generic initial conditions on a Cauchy hypersurface for the metric, and actually this happens also for electromagnetism, you will generically gen uh, generate log u, a poly uh, logarithmic expansion near null infinity log u, uh, log u squared, log r, log r squared, I mean, divided by uh, powers of r. I was wondering whether this has any effect on the subleading soft theorems. I, I would, so it's not log omega, it's really already log of u. I, I don't think it affects the leading uh, description, but perhaps it does uh, sublead for subleading terms. I don't know, it's a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, let, let me go back to, to the bond expansion of the metric. Yeah, so the, the ways I was phrasing it here, uh, yeah, as you are saying, then this, for instance, the log R terms will appear, but uh, at subly in order. Yeah, in so it's here. It, it's smaller, but uh, the right, right. Uh, if you explore but, further, uh, far yeah, enough, so, you can see them. Yeah, so I think, so they will be, um, yeah, and then the, the um, and of course the, this frequency expansion, uh, that the way I was presenting this only with the, this shear that is independent, I mean, it's free. So in principle it's independent, but, uh, um, yeah, but, but, but these log R terms are, I believe they are important when we want to understand the conservation law at spatial infinity. So usually when we do that, we, we express this uh, charge that here I was just thinking it's written in terms of the shear, but eventually this charge, uh, you should be able to express it at some uh, uh, metric component, but subleading metric component on, on uh, at spatial infinity. Yeah? And then when identifying the appropriate uh, subleading component of the metric, then this logar, I think it's, it's important. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, so I think it will be important in that context. I don't know if that uh, partially. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Andy? Yeah. Yeah, I could just comment on that. I mean, in the soft theorems in the first instance, you know, there, they're um, derived from Feynman diagrams. In Feynman diagrams, you start out with plane waves and they don't fall off in you at all. Now, of course, you're, you're supposed to ultimately um, 
you know, make wave finite energy wave packets or, uh, or whatever. But I think the Feynman diagrams in principle imply some fall offs. They, they implicitly assume some, some fall offs, but I think it's very hard to figure out what those actually are. Uh, but you mean for those in, in U or, or in R or both? Um, well, both. Right. I, I don't yeah. know what they are, but mm. I, I think that, you know, there should in principle be some transformation of everything computed with Feynman diagrams um, uh, with everything that, um, you know, with fall offs at infinity in, in position space, but uh, that's a very hard thing to do. And I mean, of course, at some point, this, this, you know, some of the soft theorems seem to inconsistent with various fall offs that were too strong, and um, but not not at, not anything that's being you know discussed after Christie Doolin mm -hmm. and Kleinerman. But but I I don't know whether the Feynman diagrams, if you could translate that all into the language of fall offs, whether what kind of fall offs they imply in, in, in classical GR. In classical, in Feynman diagrams, you have the additional constraint of unitarity. And in classical GR, um, you can talk about anything. It, you know, you have some incoming data and you evolve it to outgoing data. And uh, there's no analog of, of, unit, of a complete completeness or unitarity there. So the fall offs or whatever we want them to be. And I, I suppose demanding symmetries will might imply some fall offs. Right. Anyway, it's I a mean, very hard uh, problem. That, yeah. That... Yeah. I mean, the, uh, yeah, I thought uh, at, uh, but at one basic level, this, which only addressing this U fall offs. I mean, there is a, I mean, one to one relation between U follows and frequency expansion. So that there you can see, I mean, if you have this classical soft theorems telling you how is the genetic uh, U follow for soft expansion of gravitational waves. I, I mean, the logic we were trying to take is that, okay, we take this as the, as the correct follows. And, and, and I think those are, compa I mean, and then from the, in the quantum case, the, the whatever is a soft expansion of your amplitude that, is the dictating also the the quantum follows, let's say. Uh, but um, yeah. Andy, are you suggesting that if you started from Feynman diagrams because of unitarity, you get stronger constraints? While in the case where we just in GR just do symmetries, we that this might still be more relaxed. In or, GR, we're perfectly free to mm -hmm. um, yeah. start with any kind of fall offs we are we want and try to solve the, you know, evolution problem. And, you know, there are space times that are not anything like asymptotically flat that we could still solve the Einstein equation. And, um, but we have to demand some additional property um, to get a restriction on, on fall offs. And there, there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of literature in GR of the, you know, the polyhomogeneous spacetimes and different kinds of falloffs, and I don't think strictly within GR there's a, a way to answer the question which ones are right or which ones are are wrong. Um, some of them are more restrictive than you'd want. I just had a comment. Um, on that, so in, in one of my previous papers with Tempo, we actually worked out uh, if for a free, if I just do a free field mode expansion, and you can work out the space time expansion in large R for any field. Of course, this is usually it's just, a, just a generalization of the stationary phase approximation. And in even dimensions, especially in four dimensions, if I assume that it's a, the frequency space expansion is a simple power law, let's start with assuming that there are no log terms in the, in the small omega expansion, you still end up with log of R terms in the space-time expansion. And all of those terms were worked out in, in one of 
my previous papers, and that analysis can be very easily generalized to include log terms in the frequency space expansion, which I haven't done, but it, it in principle could be done. And you can then work out from, from that analysis what should be the type of space-time falloffs that we should be allowing in order to get log terms in, in momentum space expansions. Prahad, this was for odd dimensions or general? Uh, general dimensions. Right? There are no log terms in odd dimensions we found. But in mm -hmm. any even dimension, you have uh, an extra set of terms which have uh, which, which have uh, a log expansion as well. But we found in in all dimensions there were no log log terms. But again, just to be clear, this uh, in in those papers that I'm referring to, we assume that uh, the frequency space expansion is a simple power law, uh, so, uh, like a simple Taylor Taylor expansion, starting off at one over omega, and then you just have a Taylor expansion. I didn't assume, I, we didn't consider the general case to include these log omega soft theorems. More questions? We can also stop the recording here and uh, continue the discussion over the break, which is until 3.30 Central European time.